Hi, and welcome to the video on free energy. This is an extension of our first video in this unit, which really looked at the overall laws of thermodynamics and their consequences for living systems. Here, we're going to look at one specific notion that helps us get a handle on that, which is this idea of free energy. And the question we're gonna answer is, why isn't all energy equally useful? And so in this video, we're gonna talk about the way that living systems use energy and the free energy concept and how living systems exploit this notion of free energy by connecting processes that produce free energy in the system with processes that consume it. And in order to do that, we're going to look at this happy fellow here, this pig suckling on its mother. It, just like any other living organism, it is processing energy. The energy that this pig gets is coming entirely from mom. Some of that energy is going to be used or stored for metabolism and growth. Some of it is going to be unused and it's going to be eliminated in the waste products that the pig makes. And a lot of it is actually going to be lost to the system as heat energy, which is a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. It's useful for us when investigating biological energetics to really only focus on the useful energy. And that is the notion of free energy. Free energy in a system is the energy that's available to do work. And work here is used in the physics sense, right? Work is the ability to exert a force over a distance, to be able to push and pull things around. And for all intents and purposes, everything that living systems do that keeps them alive can be considered some form of work. Since free energy is the only energy that can be available to do work, it makes sense to focus on free energy when considering biological energetics. Just to be clear, when I say that work is everything, I mean that work is everything. This is a graphical map of all of the different metabolic reactions that take place inside of cells. And without exception, they all require matter to be moved around in order to happen. And any movement of matter at any level in an organism is work. We're gonna focus for the most part on cellular work in this unit because ultimately cellular work is the work that allows for and drives all of the work that biological systems are doing. As I'm sitting here, I'm doing work. I'm moving my mouth, I'm making sound by manipulating my vocal cords. All of that, if we trace it back far enough, is a result of the actions of populations of cells in my body. Those cells are doing work, therefore I can do work. Free energy can be investigated quantitatively as well, and in order to do that, we use a formulation that was first developed by Josiah Willard Gibbs in the 1800s, the notion of Gibbs free energy, which is stated as delta G is equal to delta H minus T times delta S. And of course, you have this equation on your formula sheet, and you can take a look at it, and you'll see that all of these terms are defined. Delta G is the thing that we're most focused on for the purpose of this discussion. We're not actually really gonna talk too much about calculating free energy here. It's not really a good use of our video time, but delta G is the thing that we wanna focus on as it is the change in free energy in the system. And for the most part, any reaction that we're going to look at is going to do one of two things in terms of delta G. It could absorb free energy. That's what we call an endergonic reaction. And so delta G in that case will have a positive value or it could release free energy, which is what we call an exergonic reaction. And delta G in that case will have a negative value. Let's look at one example, the production of a really important molecule in biological systems, ATP or adenosine triphosphate. This is a pretty picture of it, but I'm gonna symbolize ATP going forward as this. We have an adenine nucleotide, a ribose sugar, and we have three phosphates. Let's look and see how we actually make this molecule. In order to do it, we're going to take adenosine triphosphate, which is ADP, and we're going to add a phosphate group to it in order to make ATP. This requires an input of free energy. It is an endergonic process. So when we look at the energetics involved in this, we see that the delta G value for this is approximately positive 30.6 kilojoules per mole, or in case you really want it, I've also put the kilocalorie conversion below it. So the production of ATP requires an input of free energy. Well, the next natural question is, where does that free energy come from? And it comes from other processes in cells. Here's one that does it. This is 
aerobic cellular respiration. In aerobic cellular respiration, we take food molecules, here represented by glucose, and we combine them with oxygen, which produces carbon dioxide and water and releases a good deal of energy as well. The delta G value for aerobic cellular respiration is approximately negative 2,870 kilojoules per mole. Because cellular respiration is an exergonic reaction and releases free energy, we can use the free energy that is released in order to drive endergonic reactions that require the input of free energy, like the synthesis of ATP. We generally refer to this notion as reaction coupling. It's the idea that exergonic reactions release free energy into the system. That free energy can then be used by endergonic reactions in order to drive those processes, with a subset of those endergonic reactions being used to drive the production of the sorts of molecules like glucose that are then used to continue powering the exergonic reactions. It's through the coupling or connection of these two types of reactions so closely that we get the kinds of efficiency in the sorts of energetics that drive our metabolisms that we see in biological systems. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of free energy. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can explain how energy comes into an organism, how it is used or not used, and how it leaves an organism. Make sure you can describe what free energy is and why it's a useful concept when we think about biological energetics. And finally, make sure that you can explain how living systems use energy coupling to allow for the variety of chemical reactions that occur inside of them during their metabolism. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.